Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 8th, and right now we are looking at the cutoff low on the mid-level water vapor loop out over the Pacific Ocean here. You can see our next system is going to move down mainly east of the Rockies here, crossing in through western Canada. It's going to slide down here and just clip our region, bring a little bit of cold air across the area. But again, any uh, storm that takes a trajectory out of the northwest is usually moisture starved. This is going to be the case with this system as well. Very light precipitation amounts, if any, across much of the Pacific Northwest here. Um, there may be some areas that get a little bit more, mainly areas north of Vancouver Island. And the further east you go, the better your chances also for some precipitation. Now, taking a look here at the visible satellite imagery, you can see look at this smoke is pretty locked in across some of the Puget Sound here. And you can see the low clouds and smoke in some of the valleys up into the Cascades. Goat Rocks fire still producing smoke as it drifts off to the west here. You can see some of this cloud activity burning off already through southwest Washington, but the Oregon Washington coast are pretty socked in. So is a lot of the Willamette Valley, but you can see that activity also burning off this morning. Some high clouds going across the area as well today. Cedar Creek fire still producing good amounts of smoke. I mean, check that out kind of enveloping a lot of southwest Oregon there now taking a look here this is the 1.33 kilometer UW model showing the low cloud activity you can see on the high resolution model you can see this creep up into some of the valleys of the Cascades southwest BC through the Puget Sound Willamette Valley Washington Oregon coast we put this into motion you see this burn off by late morning today a relatively sunny day except for the forest fire smoke around the area um, except for the coast here, you can see these low clouds hang around in this north flow and get pushed inland, especially along the Oregon coast there. Now, as we go on into Sunday morning, you'll see the return of some of these low clouds through the Puget Sound. doesn't show much of the Willamette Valley tomorrow, but it does show some for the I-5 corridor between Portland and Olympia tomorrow and, of course, the Washington, Oregon coast. Now, let's take a look at what kind of low clouds we can expect as we go into Monday. Not too bad. Some for southwest Washington, but you can see some of the clouds from that system as it slides down over the Rocky Mountains start to impact our area as we go on into Monday afternoon there. <clears throat> so not too bad as far as low cloud coverage once you get off the coastline next few days it should burn off by the afternoon hours seattle yesterday record high temperature 77 we beat that record high of 75 set back in 2012 we're probably not going to get to 80 today with that record set back in 1951. But again, another nice warm day, probably mid-70s, maybe even upper 70s as we go through the day today. Now, taking a look here, Portland, um, uh, 81 yesterday. Um, actually, this is not up to date. Let me update this. That was the previous day. And now as we look at Portland yesterday, 82, um, one degree off that record high, 2014 there. Check that out. And probably, again, kind of close probably to that 1971 record of 82 here for Portland. We may not quite get there, though. We'll, we'll check that out. You can see the normal precipitation in inches that usually falls on typical October days. And you can see beginning of October starts off with about an average of eight hundredths of an inch during the beginning month of the month. And then almost doubles by the time you get to Halloween there with 0.1 five inches average there and you can see the record precipitation totals there on the daily highs here look at that halloween 1994 2.44 inches of rain pretty impressive there now taking a look at seattle tacoma they do have um, the air quality alert out for today dense fog advisory for some of southwest washington here but this bolt creek fire is really pumping out some good smoke and there's some other fires going across the cascades too that is really adding to this degraded air quality across the puget sound it's Almost unhealthy here at my house right now, even this morning, and that should, probably is not going to improve here for the next couple of days. But this system will eventually swing through, especially as we go through Monday evening. You can see Spokane talking about the breezy Monday and Monday night winds here. Um, enhanced risk for wildfire spread and patchy blowing dust is possible there. Now, looking at the surface map here, this is the most recent European. Um, you can see the high pressure kind of dominating the area, but there comes our system. I'm talking about for a few days you can see the trailing cold front just kind of clipped portions of washington and through montana again pretty moisture starved system main low well up over northern canada here bringing a good shot of cold air down east of the rockies there and you can see as our ridge rebuilds quickly in the wake of the system as we go through mid next week we're going to rebuild that ridge pretty quickly across the area we'll check out the forecast for potential fog across the region here coming up this is the wind at 2500 feet 925 millibars here now let's go ahead and take a look at this 
Um, watching here for this surface ridge, you can see it's spinning out here and it kind of gets flattened out. You can see the winds turn on shore here and really kind of blast across uh, Washington here. I shouldn't say blast, but it will be noticeable. You get that onshore flow. We'll clean out the air at least for a day or two here west of the Cascades. You can see the gusty winds just off the surface there for eastern Washington as well. As a system, you can see where it's located up here in northern Canada as it swings through. And quickly in the wake of that, though, you'll notice that ridge rebuild and we're going to start to turn this flow back offshore again and start to degrade our air quality once again here across much of the pacific northwest especially western portions and metropolitan areas there as we go on into the mid and later next week we're not going to get that precipitation we need potentially until almost October 20th, maybe even a little bit later here. There looks like there could be a pattern change coming up. We'll take a look at the extended forecast here in a moment. Here's a inner millibar temperature. I just want to kind of show you guys the cold air. You can see it arrive here with the system moved down. Mainly stay north of Vancouver Island here, but you can see the cold air really um, dive down in here and uh, cool down our temperatures aloft as we go on in through mid uh, and later next week. But we're going to rebound that, like I said, in the wake of that, the ridge is going to rebuild across the area. Now looking at 10,000 feet, similar thing here. You can see the cold air move down, stay mainly north British Columbia and kind of dive down east of the Rockies mainly. But um, it does squash the ridge here across our region here, at least for a couple of days. But then it is going to rebuild it in the wake here. Now, taking a look on the left, we have the European. Here's our comparison. GFS on the right, you see Washington, Oregon, California, British Columbia. There's our cutoff low here over the Pacific Ocean here. Put this into motion. Let's see what the models say here. You can see the low swinging through and just clip the Pacific Northwest here. A little bit stronger on the European versus the GFS still. But both models quickly have the ridge rebuilding as we go through midweek coming up here and it looks like the european and the gfs have agreed a little bit more on the ridge strength now if you'll take a look here um yesterday there was some disagreement on just how much the you know the gfs was stronger with the ridge across the area it looks like they've come to a middle ground here and you can see once we start to move out towards the 15th, you can see this ridge kind of kick off to the east on the European, still holding firm here for the GFS across the region. But then the GFS does kick the ridge off to the east and it looks like we're gonna start maybe some more onshore flow and even some precipitation chances um, look possible as we go through mid-October here, but not to get your hopes up just yet. This doesn't look like a very dynamic system by any means here, and we have to still watch the development of this ridge and see if we can get some more model agreement on when this ridge would kick off to the east here and just how strong this Gulf of Alaska troughing would be here uh, through the 10-day period. All right, so here we're looking at the GFS. I've sped ahead to mid next week, Thursday, 12Z. It's about 5 a.m. You can see the ridge is redeveloped across Pacific Northwest. So I want to check out our susceptibility to fog. So we zoom in a little bit more here and you can see, let's go ahead and make sure we're on 12Z back up a little bit there. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and click on Seattle, for example, and check this out. You can see the inversion in place here and some pretty good moisture values at the surface. These circles mean calm wind, strong inversion. You can see the warm air at 10,000 feet, 5,000 feet. So you gotta watch for fog development here that can really hamper your high temperatures, especially as we get further on into the season, the sun is becoming less strong. Um, and those days are shorter now at this point as well. And if we click off that and we go a little bit further south towards Olympia, let's say, you can see we're pretty much condensed at the surface with light winds with the strong inversion. That means fog. So you got to be careful about just putting a blanket statement out there for above average temperatures. Although we do have a strong signal for no precipitation for the next uh, probably a week or so here. But again, at this time of year, things can change quickly. So we'll continue to watch that. But we do have the potential for fog going through next week. Now, checking out here, this is her 3 km You can see the degraded air quality across some of the Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, Cedar Creek Fire, Bolt Creek Fire, White River Fire, still producing smoke here as we go on through this weekend coming up. You can see Eastern Washington, Eastern Oregon getting in on that action as well. Now, watch at the very end. You can kind of see the shift in the wind as we go through Monday. The her only goes out 48 hours, but we are going to start to bring Bring the onshore flow and at least clean out western portions here anyway for a day or two before we potentially turn things back onshore as we go through later uh, mid and later next week now taking a look at 500 millibars 18,000 feet you can see of course right now great uh agreement here on where the ridge is as we go through 
on into Monday and Tuesday morning. You can see the system kind of punched the ridge out of the way for a bit, bring the onshore flow across the region, clean us out. But then look at this strong agreement here as we go through mid and later next week on this ridge position again across Pacific Northwest. But we have to watch out for the fog formation across the region here as well especially west of the Cascades where there's better moisture. Now, as we go on into the future a bit more, you can see the ridge starts to get pushed out of the way, but there are some ensembles that still call for the ridging. Some are saying the troughing is on its way and we're gonna get our first meaningful precipitation. But you can see this just mess of spaghetti noodles. Confidence is not high as you go out <clears throat> in the nine to 10 day period here. So we'll continue to watch that. But this makes sense because it is that time of the year where we start to get our first systems here through the Pacific Northwest. And sometimes the models do not pick up on these events very well. And we only get a day or two heads up before a system just kind of blasts in here in the Pacific Northwest. So we'll continue to watch this day by day. But right now, pretty good agreement for this ridging coming across the region on in through early and mid next week after the system passes through. Now looking at Klamath Falls Regional Airport, a little bit of a dip as that cold air moves by the region. Then we return to the warm days and chilly overnight lows here through the extended. Looking at Seattle Tacoma, we get this dip as that system kind of slides through a bump up in the temperatures later next week through the weekend. But we have to watch for fog formation and just how extensive that fog cover is going to be. Looking off into the extended, you can see the uncertainty as the temperatures drop back down towards normal with potential for some precip here through the extended. But again, low confidence in it's way out there too early to pinpoint any details there yet portland you can see the chop down in temperatures here for monday tuesday then the bounce back that later next week provided there's no dense fog hanging out in the willamette valley there then you can see the uh, gradual decline in the temperatures we get further into october this is seattle tacoma just that miserable signal for maybe a, a couple hundredths of an inch coming up here but I, i'm very skeptical we're going to get even that but if you look onto the extended here, you can see about the 17th, we really start to bring these ensemble members into agreement that some kind of precipitation is coming here. But, you know, just have to cross your fingers at this point. This is still what we're on the 8th now. This is still nine plus days out. So we'll just continue to watch this. But it does make sense, um, you know, climate wise that we are going to start getting some precipitation across the region. Now, taking a look at Seattle, you can kind of see that bump with the cold air moving by, as you can see there. You can see on the longer one here, GFS, the bump of cold air. Then you can see that general trend, even the GFS saying, hey, we're going to start to cool off a loft a bit here. These warm ridges are probably going to be dying in here by the time you get into later October. So fingers crossed with that. Stevens Pass, just a, a horrible signal there for precipitation. What the, the control picked up on just maybe a hundredth or two hundredth of an inch of rain and the mean says three hundredths. That's not even going to do it there to put out fires there across the Bolt Creek fire area. Uh, you can see the GFS does start calling for some precipitation. You can see it's much more of a mixed bag though. Some of these members don't have any precipitation as we go through on and through later mid and later October here. Now looking at this is a cross section Helena Montana. You can see Fairly warm days here going up through Monday evening. Then you can see that cold air as it moves across the region. You can see it kind of shown coming through the atmosphere here. We really cool off at 5,000 feet and then warm back up again in the wake of that system here through mid-October. Now looking at Spokane, you go a little further west and you can see that cold air not as impactful across the region. So these warm days, we cool down for a couple days for Spokane and then start to warm back up again in the wake of that with the next ridging coming. Seattle, you go a little bit further west and you can still kind of see the cold air coming down here, but we get a little bit of a break for a couple days and then we warm back up again under that ridge through the extended. Here's a story as well, just showing a little bit of cold air making it down towards the Oregon coast there before the next ridge. Now, taking a look here, the CFS monthly, this is a sea surface temperature anomaly. I thought this was interesting. CFS is run by NOAA. Um, this is an extended forecast here for November. You can see a La Nina in charge again for December, La Nina in charge. But look by January, you can start to see it really start to wane here across the central Pacific Ocean. Still has some cold water holding on there. February, it starts to wane a bit more. And by the time you get to March here, you're getting really mixed signals and definitely in neutral territory by then. And even some El Nino type look to as we get into May and summertime next year. And I, you know, I am not looking forward to this. If we go through a July with this kind of warm water during an El Nino year, it would be quite interesting to see just how warm we would get here across Pacific Northwest. So I'm not even sure I want to think about that one right now. But anyway... 
looking here at precipitation anomaly picking up on the october precipitation anomaly pretty well here but we're already into the month so that's not that impressive going to november you can see we have kind of a mixed bag here western bc getting above average and maybe some portions of washington below December, the signal is better for the storm train to kind of be moving towards Western BC, Western Washington, some of the Pacific Northwest. And look by January, not a very robust signal for precip, actually quite a bit below average here on the CFS. Again, we're taking this for uh, entertainment purposes only. We're just kind of looking at it and kind of fantasizing about the future here. February, again, not a great signal for precip. March starts to pick up again. But again, we're getting way out there at this point. Maybe May 2023 will be good for precip across the plains and tornado activity during my next storm chase. But anyway, purely entertainment at this point. Now, October, you can see the ridging over us. Again, this is the CFS monthly. This is for November now. You can see the Gulf of Alaska troughing start to come alive a little bit, but some ridging still exists. And this would start to bring more of a storm train precipitation. Uh, chances would increase across the Pacific Northwest with this setup as we start to bring storms into the region. January, not much going on. Some troughing and ridging around, but watch February here. This high right here would cause some pretty good troughing and could bring some uh, lowland snow with this. If this high sets up a little bit further west, you wouldn't want it right here. We'd probably be missing the bulk of this activity here in the Pacific Northwest. If you want snow and storms, you want this high to form just maybe a couple hundred miles further to the west here. And then after you go into March, there's some troughing signal and whatnot, but getting way out in there at this point. So anyway, this is 500 millibars here, October, November, December, storms rolling in, maybe uh, maybe a quiet January according to this, but then potentially that active February is this ridge here, if that just bumps a little bit further west even, would leave us right in the bullseye here. So who knows, well, maybe we'll get another snowy February again, but again, purely entertainment at this point. So yeah, this system's gonna roll through here. Maybe we can squeeze a little bit more precipitation than forecast out across the Cascades and help that Bolt Creek fire. Not much help really down through Oregon as it doesn't look like it's gonna bring any meaningful precip down there. Cool us off, bring an onshore flow for a couple days and then the ridge is gonna rebuild. We're gonna do the potential for above average temperatures and potential for fog across some areas as well on through next week. And crossing our fingers for that pattern change as we go towards October 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and maybe start to bring some meaningful precipitation into the region. So anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow. Hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you guys then.